Hey, I'm Nerdchomp, and I'm working on a game called Break the Maze, where instead of navigating through mazes, you blast through them using guns, explosives, and an ever-growing arsenal of weapons. I've been silent on this channel for a while, and I have a very good reason for that. I got married! The wedding was perfect, and Mrs. Nerdchomp and I spent our honeymoon in Aruba. It was honestly one of the best weeks of my life, but it also means that I was not posting videos or working on any of my games at all. So even though a few months have passed since my last devlog, unfortunately, I have not made a few months of progress on my games. But now I'm back and I'm hard at work again, working specifically on Break the Maze, a project I've been very passionate about lately, and this devlog I want to talk about optimization, because in the final game I want to be able to generate very very large mazes. But first, here are a few other updates I've made that are more visual. I updated the mesh I use for explosive boxes, so now they're more recognizable as something that will explode if you hit it. I've also added these little damage indicators, and I changed the wall color depending on the wall's remaining health. I plan on having wall health increase as the difficulty increases, and in turn you'll be able to power up your weapons and do more damage. So the increasing damage numbers will be a good indicator of your growing power as you progress. The changing wall colors will give a good general indication of how much damage the wall has taken. And those are the visual changes I made. But the big thing I've been working on is optimization. With my original setup, smaller mazes were okay, but as they grew, it was very apparent that my setup was not scalable. So how was I generating the mazes and what needed to change? In a previous devlog for another project of mine, Imago, I covered various maze generating algorithms. The one I'm using for Break the Maze is the recursive backtracking algorithm. You can check out that other video to learn in more detail how the algorithm actually works. To handle the logic of the walls, I made each one its own actor, and whenever I need to remove a wall, I would destroy that actor. Each wall actor handled any programming logic for the maze, including maze modifiers, like rotating walls and shifting walls. For small mazes, this setup wasn't an issue, but I want to generate mazes up to 100 cells by 100 cells. 100 times 100 is 10,000 cells. But that doesn't mean there are only 10,000 walls. There are both horizontal and vertical walls, so the total amount of walls to generate for a 100 by 100 grid is 20,200. That's a lot of actors, all with their own programming logic. And while some of those walls get removed while I'm generating the maze, my procedure to generate the maze was to place all of the walls in a grid first, and then calculate which ones to remove. This high number of actors reflected poorly in the performance, and also made loading the maze very slow. I needed a better way. I moved away from the individual actor approach, and instead switched over to an instant static mesh. This is just one mesh that's been instanced 20,000 times, and I can handle the logic for all the instances within just one actor, rather than 20,000 actors. Instead of destroying actors, or even removing instances from the maze, I just move instances below the floor where the player can't see them. This method helps with memory allocation. In theory, instant static meshes are much more performant. In practice, I was still having issues. One of the issues had to do with culling. By default, Unreal has Frustum culling, which means that it culls anything outside of the view of the camera. But with instant static meshes, all instances of the mesh share one giant bounding box. So as long as at least one of the walls are in view, none of the walls would be culled. There was an easy fix for this. There's something called a hierarchical instant static mesh. Unlike the normal instant static mesh, the hierarchical instant static mesh structures its instances within a sort of hierarchy tree, which can group certain instances together. This allows for LODs to be used, and more importantly in my case, it allows for any walls outside of the camera's view to be culled. Using hierarchical instant static meshes solved most of my performance issues once the maze was already generated, but the generation itself was still taking longer than I liked. I want the player to be able to jump from level to level very quickly with minimal loading, but as it was, a 100 cell by 100 cell maze would take around 12 seconds to load. That's unacceptable. One of the biggest slowdowns is the calculation behind the recursive backtracking algorithm. It needs to visit every single cell in the grid multiple times in a short amount of time, which can be very resource heavy. But I don't need to do this calculation on the spot. I can front load those calculations all at once and store the information. So now, when the player enters the level select, there's a loading screen to calculate all the mazes in each level. I store the data for which walls need to be removed, and that calculation only needs to happen once. Then, when the player enters the level, instead of figuring out which walls to remove, it just removes the walls it already knows need to go. It still needs to iterate through 20,000 walls, so I converted this operation to C++ so it's a little more performant. I've been slowly learning the basics of C++ and Unreal because I know it can be useful and is generally more performant. I'm by no means an expert in C++, but I know enough to sprinkle basic things into my workflow, like iterating through large loops. It's been a very useful skill so far. 
And if you want to expand your selection of useful skills, the perfect place to do that is on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform for all creatives, with thousands of classes led by industry experts across not just game development, but also film, illustration, graphic design, photography, music, marketing, etc. Whether you're picking up a new hobby from scratch, or you're attempting to sharpen an existing skill, Skillshare has classes for beginners and experts alike. Skillshare has a learn by doing approach, with hands-on projects to help you learn through real examples. Members can create and share projects after completing a class, and get feedback from the community to improve their skills. In my journey to learn C++, I've found this class covering the basics of C++ very helpful. It walks me through practical examples, and increases the complexity of the scenarios at the perfect pace that doesn't lose me, but also keeps me engaged. The first 500 people to use my link in the description or scan the QR code will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Plus, you can gift Skillshare memberships to your friends and family. It's the holiday season and a Skillshare membership is the perfect gift for that special someone that's trying to learn something new or get into a new hobby. Get started today! So now I'm using a hierarchical instance static mesh, and I'm pre-calculating all of my mazes. But I was still having issues loading the levels. I got the loading time down from around 12 seconds to around 5 seconds, which is better, but it's still not great. That is when I discovered that updating locations of instances within large loops can cause a large number of draw calls and create CPU bottlenecks. Instead of moving instances in a loop, it's better to use the batch instance transforms node. I store all the new wall transforms in an array, and then I send that array of transforms transforms to batch update the instances together. Doing it this way greatly reduces the number of draw calls. And that's how I optimize my, uh, oh, wait, it's still slow. Why? <sighs> After tons of research and testing, I finally figured out that if collisions are enabled on the wall instances, initializing those collisions at the same time as adding the instances can cause performance issues. It's better to disable the collisions first, add all the instances, and then once they're all added, re-enable the collisions. Making this change really improved the loading times and I was pretty happy with, ah, oh, damn, it's still kind of slow. Okay, one last change. There was a fundamental flaw in the methodology I was using. I would place all of the walls in a grid and then scrub through each wall to move them underneath the floor if they needed to be removed. To generate the grid, I can batch update the instances. But batch updating only works if the indices of the instances I'm updating are sequential. So index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3. The walls I need to remove are not sequential. So in order to remove them, I still need to update their transforms within a loop. Which we've already established is bad. But there's no reason I need to remove the walls in a separate pass. Instead of moving the walls below the floor as a second step, I can bake the results into the array of transforms I'm using to initially move the walls into place. I don't have to move the walls into place and then move them below the floor, I can just move them below the floor to begin with. This methodology allows me to only have one batch update for all the wall instances and avoid any loops. And now, I finally have a maze generation system that loads in a reasonable amount of time. In fact, now 100 cell by 100 cell maze loads pretty much instantly. I do still have the front loaded loading screen, which can take a little while, but once that's loaded, jumping from level to level is instant. And I do aim to convert some of my front loaded maze generation logic to C++ in the future to speed up that part as well. But for now, I'm happy with the results I've gotten. Now I can have very very large mazes within the game and not have to worry about disrupting the flow of the game. If you're interested in this game and you want to continue to follow the development of it, subscribe to this channel. I'll have more videos to come. Thanks.